This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's more Samsung time. We looked at the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 recently, and this is the other 5.7-inch phone on the market for the fall of 2015. This is the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. Try to say that fast without lisping. Anyway, as you might guess, it's the bigger version of the Galaxy S6 Edge. 5.7-inch display, just like the Note, but no pen. Gorgeous design, certainly available in your choice of black or gold. We're going to look at it now. Well, so here they are. Things of beauty, no doubt, and also things that come at a high price. This is the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. And your choice, a black, which has a bluish black kind of tone that I really like. Now, my bad thing is this going to show fingerprints. It will look yucky by the time we're done with this review. And it's also available in gold, which is a kind of rare thing in the U.S. We don't always get the gold color. There is no white option in the U.S., at least not at the moment. It every bit a Galaxy S6 Edge only gone big. It's a 5.7 inch display, but let's look at this. Doesn't this remind you of a gold brick with the curves on the side and stuff like that? It's, uh, you might say the gold is gaudy, but boy, it's a looker. And it's interesting, it's not super gold, so it kind of looks silver depending on how the light reflects it, and I'm sure if I keep flashing it, it will confuse our camera. And here we have it in the standard issue black, which is also very pretty. These are glass. These are Gorilla Glass 4 with an aluminum frame. So this is the same design language that we saw on the Galaxy S6, S6 Edge, particularly earlier this year in March when Samsung announced those phones. So the S6 Edge Plus is just the same thing as your regular S6 Edge, only with a bigger screen. The functionality is pretty much the same. You're not gaining much except for the screen real estate and a somewhat bigger battery. 3,000 milliamp battery in here, just like the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 that we just reviewed. No pen here. Sorry, no pen. There is no Galaxy Note Edge 5 so far, which is a shame because I really like the last generation Samsung Galaxy Note Edge. And that one had more functionality on the sides. You could use it as a ruler. You could have your application controls up here and off of the screen. It was a pretty neat thing. Not so with this one. We'll get into what the screen does in a minute. And it's largely going to be the same story as when we reviewed the Galaxy S6 Edge. Speaking of which, here's our Galaxy S6 Edge. Side by side, you can see the size difference. It's not that bad, considering you're going from 5.1 to 5.7 inches. It's not that humongous a phone. Samsung did a good job of narrowing it as much as possible. They, likewise, they did that with the Note 5. So uh, that's usually the biggest criteria for holding a phone because your palm is only so wide for most people. I do have large hands, by the way, so don't be fooled just because I'm a woman. I don't have petite hands at all. And on the back, again, the same same exact design here. So when you're trying to decide between these two, you're really just going by the, which screen size you prefer and how much money you have to spend on these. Now, speaking of the Note 5, here's the Note 5 in white. The Note 5 is available in the United States in your choice of black or white so far, no gold. Obviously, very similar design aesthetics, except we have the curve here, and there's no pen functionality and all the neat things that go along with the pen. And here's the, the kind of neat thing, okay? So the, the curve on the screen right here, you can see, so it curves on both sides, the body curves. Now with our note, we have a curve as well, but what it does is it curves on the other side. So it's almost like the same mold being used again for the aluminum frame, though it's not. I can see subtle differences between them. But there's a, the kind of mirror of the curving going on. So with the Note 5, it's comfy in the hand right here because, well, it doesn't dig into your palm. With this guy, you get more palm digging, which is the same thing as with the regular S6 Edge, but your hand can wrap around. Beware your hand wrapping around, though, because it's easier to accidentally activate things on screen. Now, it's funny. Now that I'm trying to do that, I'm not doing it, but with the regular S6 Edge and that one that you saw is my personal phone, I really didn't have much trouble accidentally activating things because Samsung uses some intelligent hand or palm rejection on the sides to make sure that you don't. Obviously, bigger targets here with the bigger screen, so I find a little more often I'm accidentally doing something I didn't need to do not the end of the world. One thing that it does bring you is the side screen functionality. You've got your quick launcher here with people, and if the phone is off, it'll glow with that particular color if it's facing down. And now we have an app launcher, which the regular S6 Edge didn't have. So that, well, basically saves you some screen real estate. You don't have to have as many shortcuts going on the screen. And also it's handy for multitasking too. You don't have to use the multitasking button and swap through all your windows right there. You can just pull up one of those apps, bingo, and be right there. This has the multi-window multitasking just like the 
Galaxy S6 family and the Note 5 family. So you can have split window views. You can have resize them two thirds, one third of the screen. You can have floating windows as well. Nice functionality. This is a Samsung phone, so you got just about everything except for the kitchen sink in here, but a few things have gone away. Just like with the Note 5 and the Galaxy S6, there's no IR window over here. There's no AV remote control anymore. The battery is sealed inside. It's a pretty ample 3000 milliamps, and you can use USB portable chargers like, oh dear, iPhone people do, for example, or anybody's using a sealed body phone. It supports wireless charging as well, and quick charging. But you've given up the removable battery here with this design compared to Samsung's Note 4 or Note Edge. And there's no micro SD card slot. The only thing we have here in the way of slots is the nano SIM card slot that requires the usual pokey tool to get the thing out. Speakers on the bottom, headphone jacks on the bottom right there. So is your standard USB 2.0 port. As NFC, it will work with Samsung Pay when that's available. That's Samsung's counter to Apple Pay for mobile payments using NFC tap to pay functionality. It has a fingerprint scanner on it. We'll let it time out and turn off so you can see how well it works. Works really well. There's a hint as well as it does on the iPhone. Usual dual band Wi-Fi AC, Bluetooth, the GPS with GLONASS inside. And this is a super AMOLED display, QHD resolution just like the Note 5. So you got 2560 by 1440 for the resolution. It's like 518 PPI. It's a mighty fine screen. We'll talk about the screen in a little bit more. And just so you can see that fingerprint scanner in action, it does a timeout. If you turn it off and turn it right back on, it's not going to ask you. There's a little delay, which is actually, I suppose, convenient. It's not like an iPhone where immediately you have to use your fingerprint again. Anyway, turn it on and then you just rest your finger right there. As easy as that. You're going to have to turn it on first or wake it up using the button, whichever it is. Anyway, it works. It works really well. So it's nice when it, it's pretty easy to actually maintain security on your phone and you can do that. Build quality on the phone is impeccable. Nicely put together. We'll switch over to Goldilocks here, the gold bar looking one. Nicely finished seams here. A little bit of a ridge where it comes up to meet the curved glass. You can say that gives you something to grip on. By the way, here's the sleep screen. If it's asleep, you can ch -ch -ch back and forth with your finger to bring up information like, well, what time is it? See if you have notifications. And then there's a news ticker as well. If you like to read one line of news and, you know, just kind of tease yourself with those sort of things. I have rarely used that feature. It just takes a lot of back and forth like that. I feel like I'm polishing the screen. And if it's supposed to be a quick save you time feature, I don't find it to be so much, but it's kind of neat. But that's the other thing that the edge screen does. Inside, we have the same hardware goodness that we have on the Samsung Galaxy S6 family of devices and on the Note 5, which is the Exynos 7420. That's an octa-core CPU, 64-bit clock to 2.1 gigahertz as 1.5 gigahertz companion cores. Four gigs of RAM inside, so plenty enough for TouchWiz to run on top of Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. And TouchWiz has lightened up. It's still TouchWiz, but it's not nearly so bad here. Lots of carrier bloatware. Oh, well on board. Storage available with 32 or 64 gigs of storage and that's all you got because there's no micro SD card slot. There's about a hundred dollar price difference between those two capacities. This is an expensive phone and it's averaging now each carrier charges a little bit differently but between 770 and 800 dollars for the 32 gig and uh, around uh, 869 to $915 for the 64 gig. AT&T being the most expensive these days for phones. Don't know why that is. Verizon being the least expensive in terms of the full retail price of the phone. For monthly payments, that works out to about $32, $33 a month for the 32 gig version. So not a cheap proposition at all. The display is beautiful. You are getting nice stuff for your money besides paying extra for the curved display and the fact that the display is really huge. This is a super AMOLED display with Samsung's usual multiple color saturation settings that you can choose from. There's an sRGB for those of you who like accurate colors or you can go with the adaptive display that super AMOLED is and gives you super zing better than life color saturation which I think many Samsung users are accustomed to and actually like. It's also a very bright display like we said with the Note 5. This is a a phone that you can take outdoors and I'm aiming at it, 600 watts of uh, studio lighting right now and obviously you can still see the screen it's on auto brightness right now so very viewable outdoors viewable enough to easily take a photo in sunlight and I say that coming from Texas where our sun is awful darn strong 
So in terms of performance, you're looking at the same Galaxy S6, S6 Edge, Note 5, and we, you can see that we're running, well, this is called Epic Citadel, and this is basically Unreal Engine benchmarking, and it's doing just beautifully, and God, this screen is immersive and very pretty here. So this is one of the most powerful phones on the market. Now, for those of you who actually want to see some benchmark numbers, let's do that. Here's our Geekbench 3 score, a very respectable 1488 for single core and 4782 for multi core tests. Again, one of the fastest phones that you're going to find on the market today, and it should be for this price, shouldn't it? For Quadrant, it scored 36,422. For On Tutu, 64,059. For 3D Mark Ice Storm Unlimited, let's take a look at that score and launch that app just so you can see it for yourself. Programs launch pretty quickly on UFS storage, and this one's a little bit of a heavy loader, so that's pretty good. And there is our result right there on screen, and you can see it scored 24,379, which is very good. So, obviously great for gaming as well. Camera's also top-notch. This is just as good as the Samsung Galaxy Note 5 camera that we just reviewed. And it's a little bit better, I'd say, than the S6, S6 Edge, just probably because Samsung's been tweaking the firmware. You get fast f1.9 lenses front and back. It's a 5-megapixel wide-angle camera up front, and on the back you have a 16-megapixel camera, LED flash right there. And below that is the heart rate monitor. You rest your finger right over there, but camera has auto HDR. It has 4K video recording in addition to 1080p video recording. So you've got all the goodies in here. Much as I complain about Samsung software being a little overwrought, I always like their camera app because it just gives you the, the basics that you need on screen and everything else is hidden away so you can get to additional settings over here if you need them. You can control your auto HDR. I don't know why you would want to turn that off. It actually does a pretty good job. Video recording, photo recording, you can shoot a photo while recording video, switch your cameras, quick access to gallery, mode is pro photo with more manual controls right there, and fast motion, panorama, you name it, it is all here. Selective focus tries to do a little background blurring for you. Let's take some look at some pictures we shot. This one it did in HDR mode of our lazy, lazy cat. Non-HDR. Lots of detail. Fur is always a challenge. Yes, it's cat day. So here he is in a very dark room, and it did a beautiful job without firing the flash. You can see all sorts of color in his face. Not noisy, not pixelated. Strange outdoor shot, you might think, but just to see how sharp that is and how realistic the colors are and how much distortion there is, because wide angle camera phone lenses tend to introduce a lot of distortion. You can see a little bit of, see how everything is tapering into a point over here. But overall, really one of the best camera phones that I've seen. And pretty picture of some lilies, which is what we're using for our desktop pattern. Again, lots of detail and dimensionality. It doesn't look over sharpened and artificial. It's really a supremely good camera. And here's what our phone dialer looks like. Certainly very large right here, and you can have access to your favorites, your contacts, all the usual stuff. More takes you to phone settings. We have both the Verizon and AT&T versions in, and supports HD voice, by the way. Uh, call quality on both, very good. Earpiece volume quite loud, and there is a make it even louder feature in case you need it. And the speakerphone, firing from down here. The audio overall is pretty loud, considering the fact it's one small speaker firing from the bottom. Unless you're holding your hand like that, and it's pretty hard to really cover it, honestly, with a phone this big. Sounds quite good. So how about battery life? Our battery is sealed inside, so that becomes something important. Like I said, you can use those USB external battery packs to charge it on the go. It supports wireless charging. It supports quick charging, so you can top it up about 50% in a half an hour, but still, no swappable battery. For some of you power users, that's something you're going to be sad about and something Samsung's done in their effort to make a prettier phone to compete with other pretty phones who shall remain nameless. 3,000 milliamps. Battery life is a little bit better so far than the Note 5. That's going to vary, of course, slightly even by carrier and radios and use your LTE signal, all that sort of thing. But with moderate use, I've been going about a day and a half on a charge with our two review units, and screen on time has been about 5.3 hours using battery monitoring software that's not making it play a video and doing something artificial for hours on hours on end. So it's just actually monitoring the screen on time using a utility. 
So that's pretty good. It, it's, it, I think for most people on the go who are pretty busy, this will last a full day of use unless you're really hitting the GPS a lot. If you use navigation for a couple of hours, for example, if you are just really, really fond of playing Asphalt 8 all day long, well, then you're going to have shorter battery life. But otherwise, good. So which phone should you buy? Now, here's where I want to shout out in the comments. Let us know which phones you'd like to see compared to which phones. We have R2 S6 Edge Pluses right here. We have the little, <laughs> now it's little anyway, S6 Edge, and we have the Note 5 over here. We also have the traditional Galaxy S6 in-house. So if you want to see Smackdowns between any of these, you just let us know. Meanwhile, keep, keep in mind that even if you don't use the S Pen, if you don't care that much about the curved display, you just want a bigger display, though I think that the, this pen can be pretty addicting and has a lot of nice features. The, on average, the Note 5 is actually about $80 cheaper than the S6 Edge Plus. So if you just want to save a little money, that way you can. In that way, you know, as a value proposition, the X, S6 Edge Plus doesn't have a lot of extra features there for the extra money you're paying for it. You're really just paying for the fact that you want a bigger screen and you think it looks darn pretty, which it does. It's up to you as to whether those things are worth it in the end. So that's Samsung's big edgy phone for 2015. This is the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. And if design and gorgeousness and a big screen are foremost in your buying criteria, if you like the curved display, the look of it, I think sells a lot of people more than the functionality, well, go for it. You are paying like a $200 premium over the standard Galaxy S6, not edgy model, and even a premium over the regular S6 Edge because getting a bigger screen here too. I, that said, it is one of the fastest phones on the market, has one of the best cameras. It's not just a good looking phone for those who say, oh, you don't get anything for your money. Is it wildly expensive? Sure it is. I mean, looks like a bar of gold, costs like a bar of gold, doesn't it? But it's still a stunning phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and subscribe to our YouTube channel.